Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. How's everybody doing this evening? This is Christy Saul, the co-founder of the Post Institute, coming at you all live. While you guys sign in, um, I just want to say something. Today is my daughter's, Brian and I's daughter's, 17th birthday. Marge, 17 years old today. Oh my goodness. Time flies when you're having fun. I'll tell you what, I am totally blessed. Um, she's like literally one of my favorite humans on the planet. And so the fact that I am her mom just uh, just makes life super sweet. So I just wanted to wish a public happy birthday to my girl. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well this evening. Of course, I wanna plug these two books real quick. Brian's book, From Fear to Love and The Great Behavior Breakdown. Uh, Fear to Love is on promotion at feartolovebook.com. If you haven't gotten a copy of that, man, 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 I just strongly encourage you to do it. Um, just an incredible book. Uh, but actually, I pulled out a golden oldie. <laughs> if Brian watches it, he'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're pulling that out. But I thought it was so fitting. And um, this is actually a little handbook, uh, just a God, it's just incredible. I flipped through it real quick. It's just, I'll just show it to you guys. Just got these like super little bullet points hitting like the most fantastic highlights, uh, helping people have a quick place to be able to um, flip to and get some little tips, tricks, and, tool and tools. Hey, Jody, how are you tonight? I hope you're doing well. Um, and what led me to bring this out was I received a message through Messenger uh, of a mom who was talking about, um, I think it's two. She, I think she has two children, if I'm remembering right, who have just been adopted. Um, they've just come into her home and um, they're really missing their, their previous foster placement. And so um, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Hence my title, How to Help Them Settle In. Um, of course they miss that and you know, I think it's so interesting, um, just all of it, all of it, <laughs> just the whole, like how our, how our kids, um, how they come to be in the foster care system is so variable and how they come to be in our homes is so variable. Um, and yet in my heart, I just think about things like, um, what would it feel like to, um, go from place to place to place. And even though people are really nice, hopefully, um, it's all, it all has to be really confusing. It has to be really confusing for those little kids. It would be confusing for me. Like on, a, on one level, like I might have some sort of like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna be living now. Right, I, okay, I've got this information, okay. But then, you know, like the, the, the reality of it, the depth of it, what does that really mean? And imagining from a child's perspective and also imagining, because when we stress, we regress, that it may be a child who's eight, nine, 10, but in reality and from their emotional state, um, it may be more two, it may even be infant. Because what Brian teaches us is when we stress, we regress, and our points of regression often are around time frames where there was trauma that hasn't really had a chance to be processed. So um, we know that for many of our children that there is pre-birth and early life trauma, so it's very frequent. It's, it's not uncommon for our kids to regress to places of infancy and definitely toddlerhood um, because toddlerhood is the first, the first step into autonomy. And it's so funny to me how in our American culture, and I don't know about how other cultures address the twos, but how, other, how in America we, we talk about the terrible twos, but 
You know, really, they're not terrible. They're just growing in their independence. And they still have immature, childlike, concrete, emotional brains. Only now they're mobile. And so it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work taking care of those little toddlers, keeping an eye on them, keeping them safe. It takes a lot of patience. It takes some serious pre-planning because now they want to put their own shoes on and they want to tie their own shoes. And when we interrupt that, we're interrupting their opportunity to learn. Or when we rush that, we interrupt their opportunity to learn. And so um, there's just a, you know, the more we can just embrace that, that reality that this is just a, it's just part of the growth of being human and we can love our toddlers and enjoy them, them growing and learning and um, know that they're uh, explorative and they've been watching you and so they think they know, <laughs> right? They kind of think they know, but they really don't know. And so then they get into things and things get, get really messy. And so before when they were little and they weren't mobile, you didn't have to put everything up. Uh, but now they do. Now you do. If, if you don't want uh, coloring on your walls and you don't want Sharpie marker on your carpet, then you need to put those things up because they're not ready yet to manage all the instructions that come with how to use some of those things without supervision. If you don't want uh, makeup all over the place, then you're gonna need to put your makeup up. I'm just thinking about things I very commonly see uh, because now they're mobile and um, in order to um, keep your property safe, <laughs> to keep them safe, you may need to rethink how you have things organized. Anyway, that was a tangent about toddlerhood. Um, let's talk a little bit more about these little ones who are coming into this home and just, first of all, um, let's, let's honor all parties involved. And so in honoring the children, and realizing that although they may have this uh, informative bit of information that says, this is now where I live, um, there is a massive amount of emotional information that is being exchanged and being learned. Um, the missing of where they used to be also can be in alignment with missing the attunement that may have been present since they had been in that, that placement for a while. So the attunement of just having people who knew what you liked and what your flow was, or the fact that they had gotten adjusted to whatever the flow in that household was. So not only is there just that physical aspect of moving, which is huge, it's a very big deal, uh, but they also are adjusting. They're adjusting to their new room. They're adjusting to where things are, are kept in your house. They're adjusting to, is it okay for me just to go to the refrigerator and get a drink? Um, they're adjusting to the way the sheets smell and feel. They're adjusting to the seasonings in your cooking. They're adjusting to the smells. They're adjusting to the temperature. They're adjusting their they're, all of their senses are taking all this information in and trying to figure out how it fits into the scheme of information that's already there. So it's a really big deal. And so in honoring our children, just to really take it slow, to just really uh, try to keep your finger on their pulse and follow their pace. And it's okay if this takes quite some time. Um, and it may be an ebb and flow. It may be that some days it feels like they're very comfortable and then other days something sort of trips them up. Um, time in, time in, time in, time in, time in. So as much as you can just simplify life and just everything just be all about just chilling at home. We're just hanging out at home for a good little while, helping these children get comfortable and helping you get comfortable. I know... Um, I remember talking with uh, my friend, Miss Carrie, who has um, Courage Foster Agency in um, Colorado. And we were talking about the, the magical six months. Um, oftentimes people talk about how um, the first six months of a new placement, that it's the honeymoon period. And uh, 
my remark was, well, it's the honeymoon period for everyone. It's not just that the kids are on their best behavior, but so are we. We're all getting adjusted to living life together. So a lot of times we're always looking at our children and their adjustment, but we're not also honoring the adjustment that we're going through as well because there's, there's like that place when you're the hostess versus when like, okay, I'm just letting it all hang out, right? And so honoring that there's, and it's interesting that it's six months because in the world of mental health, um, any you can have any sort of like mental health sort of behavior ish criteria, and if it is in that six month time frame after any significant life change, it's referred to as an adjustment disorder, and so um, these are really big adjustments. You know, moving just moving for us, for all of us, is one of the biggest life stressors. And we think about how these kids have, you know, I don't know how many places that child has lived, these children have lived, but in general, you just think about all the different placements and all that they're trying to juggle and get used to. And at the same time, the external demands of the world haven't necessarily stopped. And so it's a really, it's a big thing. So the best advice I have is to really bring it down and take time to just get to know each other. I know when we were talking about, um, we were talking about this book, this little handbook, and maybe I can find a way to get that put out digitally because I think it's really helpful and really cool. Um, one of the things Brian um, talks about in his Parenting Softly ebook that is on Amazon is the importance of skin to skin contact. And so I remember him talking about, you know, if you're, if you are um, adopting little ones, um, depending, you know, it's all about age and safety and we want to make sure that we're being respectful and honoring, but, you know, bring those little ones in your bed and just like you were if it was your own baby and just all the chest to chest you can get and all the skin to skin you can get. Uh, if they're at an age where, um, they're interested in any sort of bottle feeding, uh, meeting those, because they're going to feel like infants. You know, so whatever needs, whatever emotional needs, you, you follow the emotional age that you feel is being presented. And again, time in, time in, time in. There's so much to the rhythm of a family that these children are getting used to. So in honoring yourself as new parents, also keep in mind that in the world of parenting, um, when we think about pregnancy, we have nine months to get used to the idea of being parents. And even then, it's a little shocking to the system, right? Like all the demands and all the needs that are, are now required for us to meet. And all of our routines and our habits being uh, all, you know, all shifted and upended and now having to figure out how to live life without sleep. So even though we have all this time to get prepared emotionally, it's still really tough, right? And so think about in the world of adoption, oftentimes you don't really have, like you may fill out the application and then you might wait months and months and months and then you get a phone call that says, and now you're a parent. That's a pretty big deal, isn't it? And so give yourself lots of time. Give yourself patience. Don't be but don't try to overload your your things to do list. Just keep it really keep life really simple and really chill for quite a long time, and just take this time to get to know each other. Um, so the other piece is um, we can feel threatened by those previous relationships, and we can in in that space of fear. Um, our anxiety can invite our children, like without even saying anything, you know, they just bring up those that previous foster family's name, and we might have a look or a feel or just attention that our body has, our energy may shift, and so if we have anxiety about whether or not we're going to have enough connection, and whether or not they're going to get used to being in our home. Um, Breathe through that. Trust, have faith. It's not going to work out. Um, it's it would be normal, you know. It's normal that we might be a little envious of the the fact that they miss someplace else. Um, this is a big deal. But one of the things that's really helpful is when in each placement, when these children really feel loved, 
And I know sometimes in the world of foster parenting, we get a little nervous about creating these attachments because that means they're going to miss us. But it is through the process of being able to create attachment that then we can create further attachments. And so um, I'm glad in this story there's still a relationship. And so they can FaceTime and they can talk. And I don't know what the distance is, but and I don't know if there's safety elements. But, you know, children can't have too many loving adults in their world. So rest, rest assured in knowing that and rest assured that they will get to know you and love will be built and it will be developed. Remember that time in, time in, time in, setting time aside where you're not trying to teach or instruct, but you are just falling in love with them heart to heart. You know, we can have a love for children that just says, I love you. But then there's another place that we get to when we really know our children you know, we really know them and then we also still really love them. And I think that's a really special place that grows. And so um, this is a beautiful time. Embrace it. Um, it's a special time and it's a one of a kind time. And so don't rush it. Don't rush the process of them needing to let go of anything. It's okay if they cry. Listen to every story about how they did it at so-and-so's house. They can even show you how they did it at so-and-so's house. Um, it's good to learn. And it, first, that gives us, you know, just, um, I know it's easy to perceive that as a threat and we, we might even be tempted to be like, oh, but you're here now. You know, it's, it makes me think about when Brian talks in this book, From Fear to Love, about when our children start talking about their their first families, their birth families, and to just keep an open heart, keep the lines of communication open, um, listen with love, and know that, there, that love is one of those things that the more we share it, the more it grows. So there is no shortage. So that's it for tonight, you guys. Um, I know that uh, we're coming up on Thanksgiving here pretty quickly. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I hope that you guys have, um, you know, brought down any, any anxieties or any fears. Um, there, I did a video to help y'all out a couple of, at the end of last week, actually, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday of last week. So you can always go back to that, but pretty much the moral of the story is, um, if you're visiting family, keep your kids close. Remember that this is likely to be stressful for them. Keep them close. Keep an eye on them. Help them be as comfortable as you can, but know that this is a, it's a stressful thing for our children who come from tough places to be visiting extended family, to be out of the house, or to have people coming over. Just anything that disrupts their predictable routine creates an element of stress. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, when we have our heart in a position to know this and sort of be prepared for that so that we can have extra patience and keep an extra eye on them, be out there, you know, if they're playing with their cousins, make sure you're either back there playing with them or checking on them very regularly. It doesn't take long for the apple cart to get upset. And so um, whenever we can, um, it's nice to be able to, to um, keep that connection and that can help prevent the big upheaval. And um, I know probably one of the most difficult pieces of that holiday time is that oftentimes we as adults, we want to stay and visit longer than what our children might be able to tolerate. And so this is a season for attending to our children. Um, we can grow, gradually grow their window of tolerance gradually. But when we stay attuned and we feel that they have had enough, you know, it doesn't matter their age. It's just like when you had a little baby. And when they got tired and cranky and it was time to go home, then we went home. And it may be that way with your 10-year-old, your 13-year-old, your 3-year-old. And But that's our job. That's what we signed up for. We are the leaders of our family. So with that little reminder, I want to say much love to you all. I have you, hope you have a beautiful evening. Um, I hope that you set aside any worries and stress that you may have from the day for at least 15, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and just enjoy your babies. Enjoy them, hang out with them, play with them. Just relax and enjoy their company. Um, and remember what Brian tells us, at any given moment, we can act out of those same blueprints of stress, 
fear and overwhelm. Sometimes we can't even feel, we can't even see them ourselves, but they're there and we don't notice it until we've already acted out ourselves. <laughs> That's just true. But when we can, when we catch it, when we feel it in our body growing, if we can take, just start with that one breath, one deep breath, followed by the next and the next, until you feel the calm begin to enter your mind, body system, and from that place, we can choose love. Much love to you guys. I hope you all have a beautiful evening, and we'll see you all tomorrow.